Welcome back to part two of this four-part video series. Today we learn to navigate the TFT dash on your BMW S1000RR. Your TFT dash has a multitude of functions, from cell phone connectivity, pairing your helmet, navigation, trip computer, my vehicle start screen, service notifications, changing your settings for optimal performance and yellow flashing lights. It can be absolutely overwhelming at first glance. So how do we even get started? We are going to start with the principal operating elements of how to move about the dash using two function controllers the multi-controller and the rocker button. The multi-controller can move in four directions depending on the screen view you are currently in. It is also your selection button, allowing you to confirm a selection or setting. It can be identified as a function of that screen by looking for the right or left directional arrow. The rocker button is used to move down or up in an operating menu with a short press and can be identified as a function of that screen by matching the down directional arrow. A long press will always take you back to the pure ride screen. So, let's take it for a ride and see how it all works. From the pure ride screen, we look for and follow the arrows. In this case, the down arrow, which is designated at the bottom of the screen and on the rocker button. A short press takes us to the next selection within that operating menu. We now see that my vehicle operating menu. From here, we have two options, a down arrow and a right arrow. The down arrow is accessed by the rocker button being pushed down and returned to the previous selection by being pushed up. The right arrow is accessed by the multi-controller being pressed right and returned to the previous selection by being pressed left. Keep in mind, you can always return to the pure ride screen by long holding the up arrow on the rocker button. Now let's go to a menu that provides multiple options and submenus to include making a selection or checking a box for a function. My favorite is the settings menu where we access racetrack and configuration. We're going to select racetrack by right clicking with the multi-controller. You are immediately notified that all connectivity functions are disabled, meaning your cell phone and all its connected functionalities have been turned off while in this mode. We're going to scroll down with the multi-controller and select OK by pressing right. We then see that racetrack is selected and the configuration submenu is available. Scroll down to configuration and press right with the multi-controller. We now have access to the race pro modes, which gives us control over the engine characteristics, engine brake, DTC or traction control, wheelie, ABS, and DDC. The race pro modes enable the rider to fine tune all these characteristics at the touch of a button and a turn of the wheel. Now that we have a basic understanding on how to move about within the operating menus, let's take a look at some optional ride screens. As you may have already found, the pure ride view is your default screen when you turn on the ignition. This is not the only ride screen available to you. There are three other displays available to you for racing mode, Sport 1, 2, and 3. All three of these displays provide different data points from DTC torque reduction, maximum brake deceleration, lean angle, lap times, remaining fuel, speed, gear, and mode, all configured to provide you with different on-track visual experience and off-track review points from your session. We are now going to take a look at three other buttons that change the configuration of your motorcycle. But not to worry, these are your simple one-touch shop to effect a change. Let's start with the DTC button. This function can be turned off and on while riding. To turn your DTC off, switch on the ignition, and when the pure ride screen is displayed, press and hold the DTC button down until the status shows off. The indicator and warning light will remain on. To turn it back on, hold the DTC button down until the display shows on. You will notice the indicator and warning light is flashing, advising DTC is on but self-diagnosis has not been completed. The diagnosis is completed when the rider begins forward motion to a minimum of 3 miles per hour and the light turns off. If the light does not turn off and continues to flash, a DTC fault has occurred. There are situations in which the track control may be switched off automatically. These unusual riding conditions, as we will call it, are things such as long wheelies, 
burnouts or warming up the bike on a stand with it engaged in gear or running the bike on a dyno. When this occurs, a DTC error is displayed. In order to clear this error, a self-diagnosis must be completed as previously described. Which leads us to the Writing Mode button. From the Pure Ride screen, press the Writing Mode button. This will bring up the display. Press again to change modes. This can also be changed while riding, but there are a few things you will need to do. First and foremost, turn off the cruise control if being used. Next, close the throttle and do not engage the brake. Press the Writing Mode button to bring up the display. Press again to change the modes until the desired mode is selected. The selection menu will remain until the mode you have selected switches over. Which brings us to the DTC rocker button. This button is utilized in the race pro riding modes. Changes made here have a direct effect in either increasing or decreasing the amount of traction control utilized by the system. To either allow more slip at the rear wheel or less slip at the rear wheel. These changes are directed to the race pro mode you are in and the configuration you created in DTC. This is a fine tuning of the traction control you have selected. As an example, we will go to the race pro modes where we will select race pro one DTC as our working source. From here you see four selections, race, dynamic, road, and rain, all with a brief explanation of their behavior. These are the DTC characteristics you have in your pre-configured riding modes when working outside of the race pro modes. And as you can see, this gives you the ability to build your DTC maps with a wide range of starting points. So when we speak about increasing or decreasing the amount of traction control utilized, it is specific to the selection of characteristic you have chosen for your DTC mapping. So your selection of race DTC versus road DTC will have a different starting threshold from one another, meaning race will have a higher starting point of slip before a DTC intervention occurs, and road will have a lower starting point before a DTC intervention occurs. Keep this in mind when adding more traction control on the DTC rocker button. And to finalize, plus is always adding more DTC support and minus reduces DTC support. Now that you have a general understanding on how to move about within the dash, I want to answer some questions that come up time and time again when people approach me at the racetrack. Typically riders on their first visit to the track with their new BMW S1000RR will put slicks and or DOT race tires on their bikes. The tire vendor then provides the rider with front and rear tire pressures that are typically outside the baseline settings for the tire pressure monitoring system, or RDC. When the rider rolls out and reaches a minimum speed of 19 miles an hour, the RDC control unit distinguishes the differential in the provided values. And due to it being outside the limit, it throws a code on your dash. The rider returns to the pits thinking there's an issue, but yet he is within spec for the tires he's running. And so the question arises, how do I turn this off? Well, we don't actually turn the RDC monitoring system off we simply turn off the notification that pops up that notifies the rider that something has gone wrong. We are still able to view our tire pressure on the dash. So let's turn off the notification for RDC utilizing what we've learned. From your pure ride screen, we will scroll down to the menu screen and across to settings, down to vehicle settings where we see RDC. Select RDC. If the box is already checked, your warning notification is on and you will receive a code on the dash. If the box is not checked, you will not receive a code on the dash, but you will still be able to see your tire pressure if desired. So, if you really want to amaze your friends on the knowledge of the system, you can tell them that RDC stands for Reifenruhkontrolle, or Tire Pressure Control. <laughs> the next question typically comes from my racers who haven't set up their bikes for the race season, yet they're looking to get that same on-track feel and response from the brake system that they're used to with direct brake lines without ABS. I find that most want to turn the ABS off. Unfortunately, we're unable to just turn it off at the dash. It's simple enough, but will require you first to remove your license plate and turn signal carrier, which is typically required by the track day provider. Removal of the carrier is simple, straightforward, and a step-by-step -step how-to can be found in your rider's manual. Prior to removing the carrier, you will want to turn on the race pro modes and turn off the warning notifications for your turn signals and brake light. In order to do this, we will go to settings, select Racetrack, Configuration, Light Warnings. Select Light Warnings to turn the notification off. 
You can always identify if a selected source is off or on by looking to see if the box is checked. If the box is checked, it's on. If the box is not checked, it's off. Keep in mind this only turns off the warning when in race pro modes. Your ride modes will still receive the warning notifications. Now you can remove the carrier. Once the carrier is removed, we can now turn off the ABS. ABS can be turned off by holding the DTC button down for three seconds or until you see the DTC light turn solid, then begin flashing and the ABS light turns solid. Your ABS is now off. To turn the ABS back on, repeat the process. I hope this helped reduce your anxiety and simplified moving about your TFT dash. I want you all to remember the information provided is in your BMW Rider's Manual that came with your bike at the time of purchase. So don't hesitate to open it up, educate yourself on your new BMW S1000RR. Next up, we take a look at the engine management system and how to select the proper riding mode for the riding you'll be doing. Also, an in-depth look at the pre-configured riding modes and how they correspond to the settings you build in the race pro modes. Special thanks goes out to Cross Country BMW for the support of this video series and Irv Seaver BMW for their beautiful facility. Stay safe out there and don't forget, keep the rubber side down.